Do you ever wonder what happens when the police leave? Crime Scene Cleaners are private companies that handle the cleanup after the police are gone. Spalding Decon is one of the nation's largest cleanup companies handling the aftermath of homicides, suicides, decompositions, hoarding, and much more. These are our stories. My name's Laura Spaulding and we are here in Brandon, Florida in front of our 2020 Holiday Hoarding Giveaway recipient. And we're really gonna be able to change this person's life by giving her a brand new beginning. We're gonna get rid of all this trash, the uh, high ammonia from all of her cats. Thank you everyone for uh, being here for our 2020 Holiday Hoarding Giveaway. I really appreciate it. Let the games begin. Go. Oh yeah. I think we had about 20 volunteers here. Uh, she can't find her shoes. She has no bed to sleep in. So I think these cats are never let out. They're pooping in their own cage. This is not good. Does this one get let out at all? Ever? No. Oh my god. Oh. How long has this home been? Oh, this for for about 25 fun. years. See this one? Oh this is probably god. the biggest spider we've oh, seen oh, on a there. site so far. Fire! Oh, here comes Laura. Laura hates oh, spiders. So she Fire! Fire! This is the worst one. Oh my god. 2015. Oh. Out of all the fridges that I've done in 15 years, that was the worst. Right now, she's hyper emotional and she can't control her compulsion to just get us out and push us away because she feels threatened right now. Wait a minute. Oh my god, they only I had a thing that was here, Lindy. And no, you we brought it out to you. It's keys. God oh. damn it! I didn't even think about that. Shit. My name's Laura Spaulding and we are here in Brandon, Florida in front of our 2020 Holiday Hoarding Giveaway recipient. And uh, this house really meets our criteria because it's in uh, level five condition. And we're really gonna be able to change this person's life by giving her a brand new beginning. We're gonna get rid of all this trash, the uh, high ammonia from all of her cats. And uh, we're gonna be able to work with a lot of great small businesses who are really awesome and donating their uh, their time and their services. And we're gonna make this a, a fun event. And uh, it's really awesome that we're gonna be able to give this gift right before Christmas. I live in Brandon, Florida. My name is Hollis Billings. Things weren't always this way. I took care of my mom at end of life. And then there was issues after that with my health and everything. And things just kind of took a, a slide like where they'd never been before. And as you're, it's like quicksand, the harder you fight it, the deeper you sink. And it was a situation that's odd, but the more I fought it, it just didn't seem to get any better. So I just kept praying about it and praying about it. And my neighbor next door sticking tight with me and everything. And it seems like now this could be the answer to my prayers because then everything can be brought to normal on one shebang professionally, like it's supposed to be. And then I can have the rest of my life just at peace and keeping everything look pretty and be where I need to be. If you are chosen for this, you have to promise me you will not let it get to this situation again. I won't. The only reason that's why I was telling the thing about what she was doing to me, I went into my 401k, my precious 401k, and annihilated it for my mom. I went into that for mom because it was anything for mom. Daddy made me, at the end of his life, made me promise that I would not leave her and I would stick with her and watch her because of this sister we're talking about. And she has a twin. He said, those first two will take your mother down. He goes, you have to make me a promise before, my di before I die that you will stick with your mother and you will guard her and stay with her. And I wasn't real happy all the time because Daddy died when I was 20. I said, Daddy, she's never liked me. She's always treated me like crap and been mean to me. And I said, you're excellent. I start crying because he was telling me he was the end of life. And he said, she loves you. He said, you, you have to guard your mother. You have to stick with your mom. So I did. Mom died in uh, 2010. I was in my mid to late 40s then, I guess it was. And I stuck with her. And I got people in my attic a lot harassing, tearing up on the roof. So they did something to the pipe up there and it started dripping. By the time I knew what they were doing, it had wet the sheetrock and I woke up the one morning and the whole panel of sheetrock's on the floor. Oh, it's like ruining children's lives. Smell the difference. 
<laughs> it's not a perfect fit where the sheetrock started wearing on the edges and stuff was coming so it's down. Falling through. It's like a powdery substance. It's not dust. It's like a powdery stuff. Because I've come up on them before. In less than two weeks, you will have a complete transformation. So we're going to help you. Okay? So actually, hang you're, on. actually, you're doing. You're saving my life. You have no idea. The only reason that I haven't done something drastic is because of the kids. Because I knew that if I wasn't around, that they would be. be you, it's not done. Yeah. So I had to hang in there for them. And I'm sitting there, and I kept praying hard. And I thought, it looks like there's a brick wall on all sides. Doesn't look like there's any way out to solve this. What the hell am I gonna do? Because she has me to the back to the wall, bad. She's not gonna be able to do much once the house is. Oh, good. she's already been back and forth here this morning, driving back. She's uh, looking at things because her whole thing is to take me down. When mom died, I knew that mom did not die naturally. And I went into a spiral deep depression. Mm -hmm. I spent a long time doing nothing but crying all day till I puked. And then I puked and then keep crying again till I puked because I was devastated and mortified and justice was not being taken care of a situation and there seemed like there was nothing I could do about it yeah. except accept it and I didn't want to accept it and I still don't want to accept it because I know she had something to do with it. Well we got to move forward now and yeah. we're going to give you a new beginning here. And that's good. Okay. And then I love it here. I really hope that you maintain. Oh, I will. Okay. And I want y'all at any I'm going to come back and yes, check on you. I want you to. <laughs> I want to come back. That's a oh, good we thing. Will. I yes. want you to. Okay. And Are I you like ready? you. You're a good person. Well, thank you. And you too. I already thank told you. you that. So I feel like my prayers came and they sent angels. Well, there you go. Right. Right. And he's probably an angel too. He is. <laughs> I get my life back. Yeah. Probably takes her a little bit to get to the door because of the mountain of hoard in there. In all fairness, it would probably take me a good 20 minutes to get from the back bedroom to the front door because of the mountains and mountains of trash in there. Good morning, Alice. Good morning. Just hang on just a second. Good morning. Are you excited? I can't find my sandals. Are you excited though? I'm happy. I'm blessed. I'm Look at this. Thankful. We're going to get it all He looks so cute. He is. He's adorable. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know if it was that or even as a kid mm -hmm. if I get real... Nervous? Like, yes. Yeah. Because cool. it's still a freaking mess. It's supposed to be. That's why I'm here. No, oh, I thought I would have all this stuff purged out. Oh, no, 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 and no. And then I... There's this stuff here. I'll this. handle this first. Don't worry. It's, Don't worry. Anyway. Okay, so what's going on with the cats? Do we need to put those in the cages? Yeah, they cannot be outside these days. Okay, I'm going to need your help with that. Yes, I'm going to... So if you in. can put them in the cage, I can set them in the back. Hand me that big chicken. Maybe she'll give me a golden egg. <laughs> We're off to a good start. She's in good spirits. She's nervous, so that means she's excited. Thank I'd like to God. count the cats because she doesn't even know how many she has. Whoa, there's a chicken. Does the chicken have food? I'll tear up some bread for her. That is completely unsanitary. This chicken needs to be released. Give this poor thing some food. She's not attacking the food. So she must be somewhat well fed. There you go. One of the rescues that Did they chased around the neighborhood while they were killing the others. Does that one need food and water? No, Donald. Does this one get let out at all? Ever? No. Well, in in the house he yeah. can be, but he can't be let out outside because. No, I mean in the house, yeah. Because he's like pooping in the back of his cage. Yes, he's he's upset because he had so okay. much stuff happen to him before he oh. was rescued. That's not normal. So I think these cats are never let out. They're pooping in their own cage. This is not good. See, animal hoarders, they typically have really good intentions of saving the animals, but then it ends up like this. It's out of control. Um, the animals are suffering. They either don't have food, they're not spayed and neutered, there's no medical attention. She's not even getting medical attention. So how are the animals getting that? It comes a point where those good intentions really expire and they, they get overwhelmed and they don't know what to do with them. And these cats, these animals are not well. They're not well at all. Maybe we can see if um, some vet resources can come take a look at them. She can't find her shoes. She has no bed to sleep in. I mean, if anyone needs our help, it's Hollis. Hollis needs our help. So I am so glad that we are here, not only for her, but for the animals. You know what we're getting ready for today? Uh, for the hoarding giveaway of 2020. So this is everything that we're gonna need is right here. 
the viewers can expect a lot of unexpected stuff. Laura promised that we'll all have fun, so we'll see how it goes. Good morning. My name's Rebecca. I've just joined the Spalding Decon crew. This is my first job. Extremely excited, as the rest of the crew are, about the, uh, the 2020 holiday giveaway. We out. What's up, man? How you doing? Pretty good. Good. The OG. Thanks for coming out, man. Yes, ma'am. The OG right here, John. I'm back. When I initially asked her how many, she goes, a lot. And I go, are we talking like a hundred? No, 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 not that many. I go, 50? Uh, no. And, she, and I said, 10? And she goes, well, a little more than that. How many more do we have? If you count it and it's cats, it's 10. 10 cats. And there'll be three more. Three more, okay. Goody and Lizard. That's a... If I sat down to pee and that jumped on my bag, I would not be oh. participating today. I, I just don't do lizards. I didn't grow up with them. There's one out underneath. All good. <laughs> See you on the flip side. Hey there, my name's Raven Snoffer. I am the National Accounts Manager here at Spalding Decon. Uh, and on this lovely Saturday morning, we're out here in Brandon. This has been the culmination of about a month and a half of work for us over here at Spalding. We've gotten a lot of local sponsors, you know, just able to give either some funds or, you know, uh, time out of their busy days and busy schedules to come help us with this uh, opportunity. So my name is Margie Parker. I came here from Fayetteville, Tennessee, which is just uh, north of the Alabama border. And I've been following Spalding Decon for about five months now. So when I saw that Laura wanted to have volunteers come, I had already been wanting to come and work for Laura, so I said this would be an opportunity for me to come and see if this is for me and if this is something I want to do maybe as a career. So what are you looking forward to most? Seeing the homeowner at the very end when they come in the home and they look around and everything is gone. I, everything is clean. My name is Jordan. I am signing everybody in today. We got coffee, donuts, and then forms, PPE, everybody gets a Tyvek suit, a shirt, booties, and an N95 as you should in a job like this. Thank you everyone for uh, being here for our 2020 holiday hoarding giveaway. I really appreciate it. We'll start removing things kind of slowly. So I suggest that you pair up with a full-time staff member and they can kind of guide you through. Let the games begin. Go. Oh yeah. What does it mean to have this many volunteers coming out to help out? This is morning? so awesome. I'm so grateful. Um, I think we had about 20 volunteers here. The super impressive part is we literally had a volunteer that drove from Tennessee to come hang out with us and work with us. So that is, I mean, the power of social media. That's the power of social media. It's, it's so impressive and uh, I can't thank these people enough. Are you excited for this morning giveaway cleanup? Absolutely. I've never done any of this yeah, before. Man. I'm just excited to get in there, see what it's all about. I think that's awesome. Um, definitely glad to be here and helping out the family. Um, I just found the information to the house. This is one of the three things that we were looking for actually in this house and this it's like a needle in haystack so the fact that we found it. That's what's up. Hey guys, my name's Nico. We're here at the Holiday Horde Giveaway. This is a level five hoard. It's a, it's a very big hoard, but it's something great that we're doing. We're giving back to you know the community. It's a great feeling just to be here and to see all these people here. I put that, I don't know what the hell that is. What is that? Oh, it's a tile to the bathroom thing. We're not saving it. Huh? Can that recycle with a plastic can? You know, I can use those around the house so I can just wash them out and keep using them. Okay, but you're not going to keep using them like you have them, okay? No, I'm probably not. But right now, if my keys had been put in one, I'd know where the fuck they are. To speak my language. <laughs> yeah, this is very typical. The best thing for us to do right now is get a roll of duct tape and a chair and just put her in it. No, I'm totally kidding. We're not going to do that. She just needs to calm down. What are you guys doing back here? What's the objective? We are cleaning as much as we can to in a place where the homeowner isn't able to readily go right now to speed up our process before the therapist gets here. Hi, my name's Skip Curlock. I'm a new franchise owner for the Chicagoland area, and I'm excited to be here today. My mom was actually a hoarder, and I'm excited to help out someone that is in need, and I hope that it changes her life in a positive way. Huh? That's a Hit him with the chair! Okay. Wait, wait.
April 2016. Wow. Selling machine. My name is Christine Zion McCombs. I am the Community Outreach Officer for Hillsborough County Code Enforcement. So I handle all the cases here in Hillsborough County where we have code violations that actually happen to people that are in hardship situations. That's where people just are not able to take care of violations by themselves. So what I do is I always look for resources and try to help them out so that they don't have to lose their home. That's my sunglasses. Oh, this is... Okay, calm down, calm down, calm down. So Laura, can you explain the organizational process here? So we have uh, keep and trash. There's no donate because of the condition that it's in. So we're trying to go through all this stuff and find like personal paperwork. How long has this home been um, hoarded for? For about 25 years. She's your typical hoarder mentality. She's severely focused on one thing and she gets scattered. She's getting panicked that people are touching her stuff. Right now, she's hyper emotional and she can't control her um, compulsion to just get us out and push us away because she feels threatened right now. Have you been in the house yet or? No. No. Still so from what I understand we only have two people in the house at the moment. We're, we're having a hard time. It's been almost an hour in getting in. Okay. It's keys. No, it's all my keys. Like in a cloth pouch there. Oh my God, it's all the keys because I have med coast stuff on these things. It's a whole lot of keys. They well, would have been. They, be they would have been probably over in the floor in here where I had the stuff stacked up. Because we're going through everything for you. You, you wouldn't know their keys. Okay. Oh, and now all that stuff, and you're gonna want to take off that dumpster. That dumpster's not leaving here until I have my effing keys. God, oh. damn it! I didn't even think about that. a lot of stuff with tags on it still. There was a purse, a hundred dollar tag on it, not taken off, a lot of stuff new, and then just a lot of papers. A lot of papers from 2006. I'm Penny Holmes, I'm the controller. This is my first experience with something like this. I usually am sitting behind the desk, crunching the numbers, so it's feel good, especially around this time when you wanna give, you wanna do some volunteer work at Christmas time to help people out. And your daughter's here too, right? My daughter's right over there, yep. She's getting her hands in there too, and she, she likes to be a volunteer. I'm here. My mom works for Spalding Decon. I think it's just really nice to help during this time of year, especially because so many people need this kind of help and aren't able to get it. So it's nice to see her get that. Hi, I'm Paula. I'm from Louisiana, and uh, this is my first hoard. Awesome. And I'm kind of excited to see how it goes so that when I get to my state, I am prepared, or at least halfway prepared. Pass this out. Thank you so much. Hollis, you were looking for this and I told you I would find this. What's that? The bottom of that crap. Yes. You're welcome. <laughs> nice. See this one? Oh this is probably God. the biggest spider we've oh, seen oh, on a bag. site so far. In a bag. There was a yep. empty bag. Fire! Fire! Oh, here comes Laura. Laura oh, hates spiders. So she Fire! Easy, ah! Cameron. Die! No. Oh, 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 no. Oh, Hi, other camera. Oh. I'm Tony Harvey, the franchise development manager here at Spalding Decon. This is actually my first time on a live horror job or seeing it in person. 
and I definitely can say it's overwhelming. Um, part of my job is to sell the service, to get candidates that want to buy into Spotted Decon, but I have to be able to express what they're going to be doing on these jobs. <laughs> And I couldn't imagine that it will be something like this. Franchisees here right now going through with this is just one of those, uh, just something that I can't really honestly express. Definitely having the hoarder here on site, you can just see the emotional attachment that she has to everything and it's just heartbreaking, it really is. We got the name for this one. What's that? Spiderville. Spiderville? Hey. Bro, there's spiders everywhere in this thing. Oh, oh big boy, big boy. Oh my god. Hey, cowboy. Look behind it. Oh my god. He's literally stuck. Hey, I'm Craig Cox, franchise consultant with uh, Spalding Decon. What's one thing that really sticks out to you? The homeowner. She, she made the comment that she, she normally wears gloves 24 hours a day, so she doesn't hurt herself in her own house. Huh? No, no, no. Oh my god! <laughs> so, I just can't believe that people actually live in, in this. Hi, my name is Diana Dubé and I'm here today to not only support my sister because Fiona works with Spalding but also to do something good for the community and to serve the community and to help other people and I'm also here to basically just basically help and, and learn a little bit more about what my sister does. I'm definitely out of my comfort zone so this is a self challenge for me. Good. You're the only person with makeup on. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my god how's it going? It's gone. Oh yeah? So That's which one's the older sibling? Huh? I am actually, even though she looks older. <laughs> if you hear any screams, it's not the cat, it's me. Yeah. <laughs> I almost didn't come just having to tie my hair up. So. <laughs> I'm like, pull your hair back and she was like, put my hair yeah, up. I, like, I draw the line. What is that? <laughs> You're like a Spalding elf on the shelf. <laughs> hey gang, how's it going? I'm Evan Finout. I'm the staff videographer for Spalding Decon. You might recognize my voice from behind the camera on a few of our most recent episodes. It's a gold mine for me because there's always something happening at this job right now. I've been cons I, I, this is honestly, I'm getting anxious right now because I'm not rolling the camera. Um, but there's there's been all kinds of big spiders, there's been all kinds of crazy finds, and I think this is going to be a huge weight off of uh, the client's shoulders once we do finally uh, get to a stopping point, and I, I'm really excited to see um, the stress and dread that she's going through right now wipe away. All right, the moment we've all been waiting for, fridge time with Fiona. This is the worst one. Fee's favorite thing to do. That's milk. I can't. Oh. 2015. That fridge hasn't worked since 2015. Out of all the fridges that I've done in 15 years, that was the worst. I can't even describe the smell. It's like we opened up a box of dead bodies that have been decaying for tons of years and everybody's running out like dry heaving. Yeah, see? There you go. You okay? <laughs> so the initial smell was sweet potatoes. The, initial, the first smell was like, okay, sweet potatoes, I can handle that. I think. And then it turned into like sweet potatoes mixed with like, I don't even know. Death. <laughs> Poop and vomit and ugh, it's horrible. It's a historical refrigerator. Hi, my name is Jordan. I'm the office coordinator. This is my boyfriend, Michael. He came out and was really sweet to help out today. Hi, I'm Michael. Uh, I'm Jordan's boyfriend. Definitely a lot messier than I had anticipated. Uh, so I've watched the YouTube videos and just wanted to see it out here in person. And it, it's it's intense. What's it like actually being here? Um, the smell yeah, that got yeah, it's you. It's the smell. That's something you won't see in the videos. Say 22s, and it's like small baggy in a trash can. But you want to be careful when you dispose of these because 
you gotta be careful where you place them. So when you have bullets, you place them in a special spot. So did they take off with my other sandwich, or they're still sitting over there? They left already. What they do with my sandwich? Uh, oh, that must be what he handed me. I don't even know where it. I put it. <laughs> I'm sorry, dude. Okay. When okay. I get really stressed, I start with stomach cramps and stuff like that, and I get sick. So take a couple deep breaths for me, just to get started. I've okay? got stomach pains back again. Deep breaths. Double deep breaths. I've got to find those other two cats. Can you tell me five things right now that you can see? That I can see? Tell me five things you see around us. Oh, the canopy, the chair, the dumpster my life going out the window. <laughs> Hi, I'm Jennifer Dobies. I'm the owner of Real Resolutions Counseling and I was asked to come and work with this um, client. So I was asked to come and give her some resources to kind of get her on the right track to be able to move forward and get all the things that she needs so we can get her back living a good healthy life. There's a lot of background information with hoarders and you really got to know the basics of what it is that you're working with because it's a very overwhelming feeling when we begin the clean out process for a lot of them. My goal today is to make sure that first of all that she's okay as this happens because like I said it's very overwhelming to a lot of quarters when we begin this process. Um, we also want to make sure that we can get her set up if she needs some extra meal assistance, making sure that she's getting, if she needs therapy, if there is any other type of medical issues or things that we can get her to the right resources with the county and help her get set up for herself. Everything in here, even if there was something, a picture of something, is everything. It's ruined, yeah. God, they had this all through the years. Well, you can go through these bags too. I'm gonna use some hot water. Them. Yeah, I'm gonna do hot water in there and soap and this you might. Oh yeah. <laughs> these are what are these in they're out of the thing? I'm trying to make sure there's no spider on there. Get everything out and get everything out. It smells kinda of like teen spirit. That's what Nirvana said. My name is Jessica Frigo. I am the marketing director at Spalding Depot. Well, I know other people might think it's weird that this feels good to be here to do this. There's many other ways to spend a Saturday. However, because of what we're doing and, and the reception that we're getting from her and that she's being gifted this opportunity, it just makes you feel good to be here and, and devote your time to something like this where you're giving back. We had so many volunteers. You know, we actually had volunteers from across the globe. We had people in Ireland, people in England that wanted to come here, but however, with COVID restrictions, not being able to travel. So we are excited about future hoarding giveaways where we're gonna be able to get volunteers from all over the country. Client on the job, um, seeing the reaction. Um, was this what you were expecting or is this not what you were expecting? So it's definitely different because I did meet the client last night when I came, I, we dropped off the trailer last night um, and she came out and spoke to her and she was very nice, very friendly. And then um, today I think her anxiety got the best of her in, in a way. And, and you know, that's not obviously from a clinical standpoint, but just from, uh, from looking at it and seeing it, it's definitely like stepping inside one of our hoarding cleanup episodes. When she did her um, initial interview with us, she mentioned 98% of everything is trash. And now everything is sacred, even a, a plastic water bottle. So just when we thought we were making some progress, animal control is here to investigate the animal situation here. And this is really gonna take Hollis and put her over the edge because the animals are literally all she has. So I'm worried how she's gonna react to this. This is really terrible timing. They're coming to give you a spay and neuter for 10 bucks. Okay. Yeah. Right. She's eating lunch right now, so. She's in a good place right now, I think, eating and it's just, it's, it's overwhelming. So we've got to make sure that we turn this to what's gonna help her because this is gonna be another trauma right now that we're gonna have to work on. Well, I don't, I don't think her cats are gonna get taken away. No. Because there's no limit in the county. Right. But if we spay and neuter them, then at least it's gonna be, a, you know, we'll stop it right here, and that way they can live out with her for some life. Yeah. Hey, Hollis, I have a young lady who needs to talk to you outside about some stuff. I want them or not. No, 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 let's go outside. Hey, Hollis, I have a young lady who needs to talk to you outside about some stuff. What is it? I mean, stevia back then? I guess so. Oh, I found a baby. Oh my gosh, that is creepy. There you go, saddle. Where'd you find it? Uh, it was in one of the bedrooms. Oh. Wrapped up in a plastic bag. Mm -hmm. Pretty good mailbox. Got handy. Nothing, just a laundry suit. That's it. Mm -hmm. No mail, huh? Well, we're 
we're finding cash, we're finding bills from 1989, so we're having to look through everything to make sure we don't miss anything. I was young. <laughs> yeah, it's... Yeah, because I went to USA. Hey, we still representing. I, I see, I yeah. did too. Look. I, I so, did too. <laughs> there we go. It's a fabulous university. Hey, no, I think you should keep it. It's a, it's a staple. We need to keep that. Well, your knives. Ooh, spider hanging. <laughs> Spiderville. Ooh, boy. Hey, you're whipping shit at me, see? It's okay, baby. It's okay. Once you get him all in the air, he'll have fresh air and everything will be great. All right, you got that, right? You got them all now? Yeah. All right. Does this thing look like it's durable enough to hold up? It's sure. Fun. Almost filling four trailers, which never thought we would do. and. Still probably fill at least one or two more. But if I come across being crass or something like that, I don't mean to be. You're like angels on earth right now. You don't have to do this. You're all intelligent and, and physically fit. You could do anything you want to do, but you've dedicated yourself to helping people, and I appreciate it You're very welcome. much. You're very welcome. You guys are amazing. This has done a lot. It's been a painful process. Yeah. For me, I kept thinking I could do it all myself, but when I see how much it took a team to work on, there's no way that I could undo this. This will be a lot safer place for you to live now. Yes. We are about at the end of day one. Um, it has been a very long day. Uh, we've got probably between 10 and 15 people helping us um, unload. And this is not a very big house. It's about 1,000 or maybe 1,100 square feet. And we've gotten most of the kitchen, 75%, 100% of the living room, 100% of one bedroom. The other two bedrooms are still full. The plan for tomorrow is to continue bagging up all this trash. 13 cats and a chicken or something over there that we pulled out of the house. Two dead ones uh, were found uh, wrapped up in a bag. Uh, I guess, I don't know why they were kept or not, but you know, volunteers and staff are spent at this point. Uh, we've been working since 9 a.m. It's labor intensive, but I also think it gives them a really good view of what we do on a daily basis. And it's not just trash removal. This is just very, um, it's emotional, it's very difficult physically, and it just requires a lot of stamina. We're super appreciative to all of our um, sponsors here that uh, that helped us, you know, uh, put, put this off and pull this off. And um, hopefully tomorrow we will uh, finish all of the trash removal, uh, maybe by midday, and then we can um, start the cleaning on Monday. So we are here Sunday, the beginning of day two for our holiday hoarding giveaway. And uh, we knocked on the door and uh, woke her up and she has absolutely no memory of us being here all day yesterday. Now, on another note, we look through the window in the living room and she has moved back in all the stuff that we took out. There it is. Oh, fuck. Jesus Whoa. Christ. What is that, Fiona? Why is its neck like, oh God, turn around. Oh, oh look at that, baby. Oh, holy shit. 100, 330, 350, baby. More, baby, more. You're making it rain. I'm making it rain. Look at that, baby. What do you have? $350 <gasps> was in that drawer. How'd you, look at this. Oh my God. There's the body. Look. Oh. <laughs> Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. It was a lot of fun working on this holiday hoarding giveaway project. I hope you liked it as well. I wanted to wish you a very Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays and check back in a couple weeks for part two of this episode so you can see how it turned out. For more information, visit any of our locations.